Yo, welcome back everybody to the course. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about how to set up the iOS part of uh, this application in React Native so we can have our iOS simulator running at the same time because we are developing this for both uh, platforms. So since we've already installed Watchman and Node and Brew, we don't need to worry about any of these steps. What we need to do is install something called Xcode. Now the easiest way to do this is, in their words also, um, to do it straight from the iOS App Store and thankfully um, it's really easy so if you have your App Store opened if you don't go ahead and open it and search up Xcode and then it should be the second one right here Xcode developer tools I already have it uh, downloading it's been like almost an hour um, but let this finish downloading and once it's downloaded then go ahead and just open it up alrighty so now my Xcode has finally finished installing after about 12 hours almost and once it's done installing, go ahead and just click open. Alrighty, so once it's open, if you've already installed this beforehand, you want to just make sure that this is a fresh, uh, up-to-date Xcode. So the way you can make sure of that is you have to go into Xcode, click on preferences, and then we have to click on locations. And then on the command line tools, just go ahead and make sure that's up at the uh, most up-to-date uh, version of it. Since it's a fresh install, I don't have to worry about that. Now after that, we have to install our actual iOS simulator. So to do the simulator, all we have to do is click on components right here, and then we have to click on the most recent one. I don't actually know of um, anything about iOS specifically, I mainly just use Android, but I'm gonna go ahead and select the most recent one and install that. Alrighty, so after that we have to install something called CocoaPods. This is a dependency manager um, built on Objective-C and for Swift. And there's a couple of ways to install it, and I've noticed that specifically for M1 chips that there is a issue that comes up. So if I were to do, let's say, um, sudo gem install cocoa pods, there would be an error. Um, well, there used to be an error, uh, but it would say something like, um, cannot install, you don't have permissions to write, or gem doesn't work, something like that. So the way that I went and bypassed this was doing brew install cocoa pods and well I've already installed it and then um, in this method I can still install cocoa pods and everything that it comes with as opposed to doing pseudo gem um, so I can check if it's working by doing pods dash dash v oops pod dash dash v should be pod dash dash version there we go okay so pod dash dash version shows me that I have it installed right here Alrighty, so now what I'm going to be doing is, while the simulator is downloading, I'm going to be initializing a brand new project just to make sure our iOS simulator works. And it's going to be the exact same uh, snippet of code that we had last time, npx react-native init, and the name of the project. And since this is what we're actually going to be building upon, I decided that we're not going to use that boilerplate code, we're going to be making it scratch from whatever boilerplate that uh, React Native provides. I'll call it um, any anime list. That'll be the name of the project. I know it's very, very creative. Thank you. So it's going to go ahead and download the template and let it work its magic. Alrighty, so now everything is done installed. And let's go ahead and actually run this on iOS and see if it works. So first I'm going to do npm start to start our metro. And in another terminal, I'm just going to go ahead and do npx react-native and then run iOS. And then it should ask me, unable to boot, perfect, and then it should boot the device and then build the app on the device. And it's going to take some time. Oh, I guess it's not. It's right there. And so just to make sure everything's working, I'm going to go ahead and open up my app.js and I'm going to add a couple of S's where the edit is right here and save it. And perfect, everything's connected. And so from here on out, we will be continuing uh, the development primarily through Android. And then at the end of the tutorials, we will be opening it up in iOS just to make sure that everything is working as it should in both platforms. So if you did enjoy this video, be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.